Hello, this is Jenny Kasson here. Good to see everybody. Uh, time to share with you ways that you can raise money for your business in a way that lets you stay true to your values and not give up any control. And I wanted to share something today uh, about a presentation I heard today, which was really, really interesting. Um, I can't remember the name of the person. I'll maybe I'll share details in the chat in the uh, comment section. But um, it was a really interesting presentation by someone who feels that we really need to have um, post-growth companies, post-growth entrepreneurship. And she said, you know, a healthy business is one that grows a lot in the beginning and then steadies out and kind of just continues to thrive but doesn't necessarily continue to have exponential growth. And it's more like what happens in nature. It's like with almost anything in nature, like if you think about a tree, a tree doesn't just keep growing and growing really fast forever. You know, in the beginning it grows fast and then it reaches some kind of stasis and it doesn't really grow a lot more. It just continues to thrive and maybe, you know, put out seeds to help new trees start or things like that. So I think that makes a lot of sense. I think that it, um, that kind of ideal that we have right now in a lot of um, entrepreneurship circles that you have to have a fast growth business, a business that's going to reach a billion dollars in revenue as quickly as possible, uh, that paradigm is you know, pretty unsustainable. <laughs> I mean, very few businesses can do that. And then when a business does do that, it's often at the expense of a lot of other things um, like sustainability, uh, you know, being able to treat people well, being to keep able to, you know, make customers really happy. Um, you know, there are some examples of companies that could, that maybe have grown really fast and grown really big and continue to be successful, do a good job, serve their, you know, customers well. But in most cases, it's a pretty devastating um, process to go through that most companies don't even make it. And then for those that do, a lot of things get kind of distorted. The, the you know, once the company goes public, it's very much beholden to the public markets and quarterly reporting. So um, I really liked what she was saying about, you know, why do we need that to be the model of success? Like, let's be more like trees <laughs> and let's not focus so much on growth, but just getting to a point of sustainability and thriving. But then she said something and people on the call were kind of pushing her on this. They were saying, you know, what would be the role of it? Because she said the way to do that is to bootstrap. Don't take on any investment. And people on the call, including me, were saying, well, you know, is that really necessarily true? Isn't there a way that you can have a business that follows that growth model, but also have investors involved? You know, investors that they're not, you know, making huge explosive returns, but they're sharing a little bit in the, you know, positive net income from the healthy, thriving, sustainable operations of the business. And she really resisted that. She was like, no, you really shouldn't take on investors. Investors just, it's inherently extractive. Um, you know, she said, maybe the only thing you should do is um, offer a 0% loan because otherwise it's extractive. And, you know, I just, obviously, I don't agree. <laughs> I wouldn't be, I've, for the last 15 years, I've been helping businesses that I believe are super healthy and sustainable and not try, and non-extractive, and I've been helping them raise money from investors. So I just wanted to share that I don't think there's anything, in my opinion, there's nothing inherently contradictory between being a healthy, sustainable maybe, you know, a business that isn't necessarily really growing is just kind of a steady state business that produces enough surplus to cover, you know, uh, reserves in case of emergency and paying some amount out to investors. And maybe also, you know, some profit sharing with, uh, with the workers. Um, so yeah, I don't think there's anything inherently uh, misaligned between that and having investors. If investors are on board with that, they can make a reasonable return and you don't have to be pushed to grow in a way that's not healthy or sustainable and that is extractive of resources. Um, and I, one example I love to talk about is uh, equal exchange 
which is a business that's, you know, quite a successful business, has raised tens of millions of dollars from investors, and um, they just pay out a steady, you know, reasonable amount every year to their investors. They're, they don't have that growth imperative because their investors are happily just collecting a small piece of that surplus that they're generating every year. So anyway, I hope I, I'm going to talk to this woman and maybe convince her because <laughs> I just think, you know, saying that, oh, everyone just needs to bootstrap, it's a little bit unrealistic. I mean, she was saying, you know, just start generating revenue and then, you know, you won't have to worry about raising money. But I think expecting people to have enough money to get to the point where they can be sustaining healthy revenue sufficient to cover all the expenses. It's just, it's hard to do unless you have like a consulting business or, um, you know, a law firm or a business that doesn't have a ton of upfront overhead costs. But even then, I mean, like for me, you know, my business is a service business. I don't have a ton of upfront costs to get off the ground, but I need a website. I need, you know, marketing expertise. I need an accountant. So even that type of business, if you can get some money early on to cover the costs of those things that are going to make your business more likely to be successful and survive the hard times, I think investment can be a great thing. It just has to be structured right. I mean, that's really the key. When you're talking about investors wanting unicorn style returns, yeah, that's inherently going to create an unhealthy, unsustainable model of growth. But if your investors are patient and supportive of the other model of growth, that's more sustainable, then I don't see any contradiction there. So I just wanted to let you know, we are we decided to do a five day challenge to help people design an offering because, you know, to making sure that your relationship with your investors is in alignment with uh, how you want to grow the business and how what's, you know, what your values are and how you want to see your business behaving in the world. Like, do you want to see your business growing explosively and maybe becoming somewhat extractive and exploitative? <laughs> or do you want a business that, you know, grows to a, you know, a steady state and then becomes like thriving and sustainable? So having, you know, designing an investment offering that fits whatever it is you want um, is really important. And a lot of people don't think about that. They just look for investors and don't even really give a lot of thought to what that investment is that they're getting. Like what is the relationship that's being set up between them and their investors? Be sure to join our mailing list at jennycasson.com. There's a place where you can add yourself to our mailing list and that way you can be sure to get that information when it comes out. All right, have a good rest of your day. I hope uh, you are thriving and surviving. Thank you. Bye.